Good morning, my dear. Glad to see you again. It's been a while since I last posted a video about the inside of my job, right? Then here we are, as so many of you have requested. Please welcome the series "Walking with Wim." For who first come to my channel, I'm Wim. And I'm working as a freight forwarder at Mediterranean Shipping Company, which is one of the world's leading container shipping line. Mediterranean Shipping Company (MSC) is one of the world's leading container shipping lines with headquarters in Geneva, Switzerland. For your information, MSC is operating 524 offices across 155 countries worldwide, with over 100,000 employees. In addition, MSC's shipping line sells on more than 215 trade routes, calling at over 500 ports. The very first MSC containers was exported to Vietnam in 2002, and at that time, MSC was represented by a third-party agent. After that, in 2005, MSC established their own office here, with over 160 employees in three offices in major economic hubs across Vietnam. Ho Chi Minh City, Hanoi, and Haiphong, and are also represented by third-party agencies in Da Nang and Quy Nhơn. And yes, I'm proud to be one of the people currently in charge of MSC branch in Vietnam. As you know, freight forwarders like me act as an intermediary between the company who makes the shipment and the final destination for the goods. Although we do not carry out the shipments ourselves, we offer different transport modes such as sea freight, rail freight, road transport, and air freight shipment. Freight forwarders can help companies decrease cost, time, and increase operational efficiency by preparing all documents necessary for importing and exporting goods, selecting transportation, and finally negotiating freight charges. Oh, looks like we've got some new work here. Let's find out. So here, I have received the booking from these two enterprises to play the role as a freight forwarder for the trading project. Let's together take a deeper look into the information about parties of this transaction, and also, most important, its conditions and terms. Okay, so what do we have here? First of all, how about a little detail from our customers? Our exporter, Vietnam Black Tea Limited Company, is located in Vinh Phúc Province, Vietnam. They are specialized in cultivating green tea, black tea CTC, and STD, or orthodox black tea, for both exporting and domestic use. They are one of the leading units in supplying the main ingredient, and of course, is tea for milk tea, peach tea, and kombucha producers. Vietnam Black Tea Companies own a 437.5 ha farm in Lâm Đồng, harvesting 3,000 to 3,500 tons of dry tea per year, accounting for 1.56% total tea production of Vietnam in 2020. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, the sales stay stable with export sales from 1.6 million USD, coming mainly from the Middle East importing countries. And the domestic sale gained 3 million USD. And our importer, Damascus Company Limited, lying in El Haytham Street, Romania, Damascus, Syria, which is a small enterprise in processing and distributing processed tea. They have their highlight goods consumed domestically is the direct use tea bag. Well, the whole world is now suffering from COVID-19, so the price of this tea has gone down 6.2% compared to last year, and the international supply chain is facing difficulty due to harsh control over this awful virus. Despite those problems, the two parties still meet up with a sale contract of 70,000 USD, with the commodity name Vietnam Black Tea STD 3983. Let's look further into this contract. So, two parties agreed to buy 35 tons of Vietnam Black Tea STD 3983 with 2 USD per kilogram by the CIF shipping method at Tartus, Syria. The delivery time is August 2021. 
it is reasonable not to mention the exact date of delivery because of the large volume of the goods that needs preparation, and in case of encountering problems of transportation. In payment terms, with the total value of seventy thousand USD, the two parties decided to pay by telegraphic transfer with thirty percent in advance (TTR) and seventy percent after the importer receives the BL, as known as bill of lading. This type of payment is more efficient than the LC method because it is not a big contract total. Both of the parties are responsible for the payment, so the risk for the goods. Quality is lowered. The advantage to the Vietnam exporter is that they can often obtain cheap insurance and then build a larger amount into its selling price. The advantage to the importer is that they do not have to worry about declaring the shipment to its own insurer. However, the contract has not been signed and stamped by the seller, Damacuso Company Limited. There are many insufficient details, and some articles are unclear and confusing, as discussed above. Maybe the two parties have cooperated with each other for a long time and have high credit. Hence, some terms are overlooked in the contract. In conclusion, the contract should add some articles to clearly define the responsibilities of each party, as well as the basis for resolving misunderstanding and disputes when breaks arise. Well, that's maybe enough to talk about. Are you ready to meet our customers? Let's go. Here, I'm greeting Miss Ngan, the representative of our exporter. Due to the distance, we will have to meet our importer, uh, Miss Anna, via Zoom. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, shall we start with some greetings? Hello, my name is Nguyen. I'm really pleased to be your faith forwarding partner. Mm, I, guess you, I guess you guys have known about me, right? Yeah, hi Nguyen and hello Anna. I'm Ngân from Vietnam Black Tea Company and today I will represent my boss to take part in this meeting. Nice to meet you all. Oh, such a big chance and nice to meet you guys too. I am Anna from the Marcusha and sorry, sorry you guys for the inconvenience because I cannot travel to Vietnam for uh, to meet you guys directly, but I try my best to engage in the process. Great. Sounds like a good wedding. Shall we start? Okay. To begin with, I will start by clarifying all the steps needed to be performed. There are eight main stages, including booking confirmation, preparing and packing goods, export custom clearance, complete export import documentation, shipping preparation, loading commodity to container and delivering, payment completion, and finally, recording and finalizing shipping process. First, let's start with booking confirmation. Step 1. Booking confirmation. In this case of our project, we're applying CIF Incotrium 2010. Under the CIF, the seller, Vietnam Black Tea Co. Ltd., is responsible for purchasing insurance for the goods. In addition, Miss Ngân must contract for the carriage of the goods from the place of delivery 
to the name port of destination. They are the information to keep in mind when analyzing a booking confirmation. First is the Inco terms, CIF Inco term 2010, the booking number, the port of unloading, Tatras, Syria, the port of loading, Cát Lai, Hải Phòng, by sea. I, the freight forwarder authorized by the exporter, will book the vessel and prepare the next steps. In this packing step, the packing list tells us the net weight including packing method of the goods, type of goods, quantity and packing specifications. The packing list is necessary and important to have the forwarder confirm how to load and unload, what kind of container to use, 20 feet or 40 feet, department store or refrigerated container, can be loaded and unloaded by workers, specialized equipment such as forklifts, prints, how to coordinate chucking, how many tons of trucks to use, determining the allocations of goods when having no check goods during custom clearance. In our case, here are the information to pay attention to. First thing first, here we are seeing the packing list, which has been prepared and we will discuss deeply into the specific terms of this packing list. As two parties have discussed and agreed, the port of loading will be Haiphong, Vietnam. Also, part of this chart is Tata, Syria. The delivery term will have to follow strictly with that mentioned in the contract, CIF Tartas. And last but not least, we care about packing. Goods are packed in paper sacks with the net weight of each sack is 35 program. And the total number of containers needed to pack all the goods are 2 times 40 feet AC containers. The types of insert product is Vietnam Black Tea STD 3983. The type of insurance is C type. In the third step, we need to gather a necessary pack of documents including Bill of Lading BL, Commercial Invoice, Exporting License including Health Cert, Phytosanitary Cert, Quality and Quantity Cert, Radiation Cert, and Certificate of Origin CO. Finally is the Certificate of Insurance CI. Here, I will divide those into two main groups. Group 1. Documents needed for custom clearance at the exporting port. In this group, the exporter will authorize me, the freight forwarder, to finish all custom clearance at the exporting port. I myself should make sure that I got all the main documents, which are... First, commercial invoice. As a minimum, a commercial invoice must include the following details. First, name and address of the exporter and importer. Date of issue, invoice number, description of goods, quantity of goods, total item value, total invoice value and currency of payment. You should also include the equivalent amount in a currency freely to convertible into euro or another legal tender in the importing member state. And finally, is the terms of delivery according to the appropriate INCO term. The second is the export license. In this case, phytosanitary certification is needed so as to export their product. So, the question is, when is a phytosanitary certificate required? According to the trading law of the exporting country, requirement from the importer, the importer will require a phytosanitary certificate to import regulated articles including commodities such as plants, box, tubers, or seeds for propagation, fruits, vegetables, cut flowers and branches, grain and growing medium. If the shipper cannot provide a phytosanitary certificate to the importer, it's highly likely that the goods will not be clear through customs. The goods may be seized and completely destroyed. Thirdly, is freight documents. To be specific, BL document. Let's take a deeper look. To order bill of lading, as the original bill does not show the consignee name but only the word to order in the consignee section. This bill of lading, as long as the person holding the original bill of lading as certified by the shipper's endorsement, can receive the goods. 
The gifts are delivered in two containers 40 feet SC. Outside width is 8 feet, equivalent to 2,438 meters. The number of containers. The purpose of the container numbers is for the convenience of the seller and buyer to take their freight journey. FCL, full container load, is it often preferred over LCL because of its cheaper freight rates, simpler shipping process, and less risk to the goods. In the goods description section, shippers load, stow, and count is to protect the logistic company in case the consignee claims shortage of goods after receiving. The consignee cannot hold the logistic company responsible for the shortage of goods because the company was not present at the time of packing. The sum of gross cargo weight and the number of seals is similar as the information in the packing list paper. The date of loading on the ship and the date of issuing the bill of lading coincide with the 20th July 2021. 4. Certificate of Insurance CI In essence, the Certificate of Insurance is considered equivalent to the policy, but the legal value is not equal. This insurance certificate, issued by SHB Vinacomin Insurance, also contains basic information about the insured, means of transport, description of goods, insured value, and coincide with the data of relevant documents. Insurance company's name, SHB Vinacomin Insurance JSC. The maximum insurance value or custom clearance at the importing port. 5. Packing list. Finally, we need a packing list as we carefully discussed in the previous steps. Beside these aforementioned documents, the exporter also has to send some special documents so as to assist his partner in custom clearance activities at the importing port. Some could be listed. A. Health cert. B. Quality and quantity cert. The information shown must be consistent with the information in the contract. C. Radiation cert. The samples were drawn at random according to Vietnam Standard TCVN 5609-2007 for analysis in the laboratory. The result of the inspection was that the goods were not exposed to radioactive material and fit for human consumption. D. Certificate of Origin CO The type of CO It is a non-preferential CO from the Certificate of Origin COO and it's a CO issued directly. So that's the end of step 3. Let's continue with the fourth one. Step 4. Custom Declaration and Custom Clearance for the Importer Based on the information shown on the documents, Mediterranean Shipping Company will act on behalf of the exporter, Vietnam Black Tea Company, to perform custom declaration-related procedures through available electronic custom shopware. Step 5. Shipping Preparation The next step is a crucial step in the forwarding process in which the freight forwarder has the responsibility of preparing the means of transport and completing the procedures to export the goods. After completing all custom declaration procedures and finishing hiring a shipping agent, the freight forwarder received a request for quotation from the exporter and sent it to the shipping line, then received queries and invoices and provides put back to the exporter. Then, the freight forwarder must provide bill details for the booking department of the shipping line to add to the bill of lading. This step must be performed before closing time and before the actual export. The booking content must also be consistent with the original bill of lading. Note, if the customer has special requirements, be sure to state them clearly in the booking application. This booking note will be handed over to the forwarder by the carrier to finish the booking confirmation process. After receiving the Certificate of Origin CO from the Chamber of Commerce, the freight forwarder will arrange for intermodal transport, which means transporting the container from the exporter warehouse or factory to the designated shipping port for loading into the ships. Then, the representative of the high shipping agent 
will perform at the port paperwork, custom clearance checks, and does the final inspection of the container and pays the port dues to ship the containers inside the port warehouse or storage facility. Step 6. Booking and loading commodity to empty container. When making an export shipment, in addition to focusing on documents, custom declarations, means of transport, we also need to pay attention to the packing of goods into empty containers. To do that, the forwarder will have to carry out the procedures for renting empty containers. First, we will analyze one type of document containing all of the important information that the forwarder requires to pick up the empty containers at the carrier's depot, called Container Release Order or Empty Release Order. Empty Release Order is a document issued by the carrier to the forwarder that they or an appointed trucker may pick up the empty containers at the carrier's nominated depot. The document indicates important container collection information such as depot location, equipment, quantity and type, among various others. In order to be better understand the function of the container release order and when it's issued, we'll take a few step back by explaining some of the earlier steps in the shipping process. Step 1. The forwarder checks the latest selling schedule and proceeds to pick a suitable selling date before a CRO is released by the shipping line. Step 2. Forwarder issues a booking request. In return, the carrier validates vessel space and equipment availability before issuing a booking confirmation to the shipper. Step 3. Closer to the estimated time of departure, the shipping line will release the container release order to the shipper so that their point checker knows where to pick the containers up and how many containers need to be collected. Step 4. Eventually, after the container are loaded by the shipper, the checker waits the fully loaded containers to the port before the container depot cut off. Finally, the vessel departs from the port of loading. As seen in the document above, the CRO contains some of the following specific information. First, booking number. It is a unique number generated by the carrier to track the shipment from origin to destination. This also acts as the carrier's reference number. 2. Vessel number. The vessel of the carrier where the container is transported on, as well as the voyage number. 3. Estimated time of departure. The estimated date and time the vessel will leave the port of loading. 4. Equipment type and quantity. The type and quantity of containers that are going to be collected by the trucker. As seen in the above information, the goods are delivered in two times 40 feet high cube containers. 5. Port of loading. This is the port where the containers are loaded onto the vessel before departure. It's also called the origin port. 6. Port of discharge. This is the port where the containers are unloaded from the vessel after it has arrived. It's also called the destination port. 7. Empty container depot location. 8. Type of commodity. And 9. Closing time. It's the related base and time a fully loaded container can be accepted at the port of origin. It is also called the container yard cut off. And lastly, carrier remarks. Any additional remarks are listed here. Step 7. Payment completion. After the goods are loaded onto the vessel, the exporter will notify the buyer and ask for payment. As mentioned in the invoice, the term of payment used in this contract is TT, Telegraphic Transfer. Thereby, the exporter will bring the documents to the bank to request payment. The set of documents includes sale contract, commercial invoice, packing list, bill of lading, and CO if required by the buyer. The commodity delivered within this contract is black tea. So, additional documents are required, such as health certificate, phytosanitary certificate. Step 8. Also, our final step in our working process, recording and completing shipping process. 
the Jamakusa company settles with customers and keeps records. The forwarding stop keep record including the photos of declaration, contract, invoice, packing list, BL, CO, and finally, phytosanitary certificate. Well, finally, we have done a job with a satisfying outcome. It is my honor that every day I have the chance to challenge myself and engage in big business. Yeah, I kind of feel exhausted, but you know, no pain, no gain. Well, maybe next time I will show you a bit further into how to build a contract. You can subscribe to my channel for more useful, I hope, information. So goodbye and have a nice journey. Thank you.